Well, hello. So we are still in full swing here of late spring and finally able to plant everything in containers. So I've been going around filling up the containers with the agave, the succulents that I save, and I wanted to bring you along for a little bit of it. So that's what the, today is going to be kind of a full day of doing is I'm going to do a couple more here at my house and then I'm going to take some things over to my mom's where I plant some agave, some wonderful succulents, some different fillers in some of those urns I have over there too. So I thought let's just go around and plant some. Um, a few of them I'm going to be doing some unique saving things on where I try to like extend the amount of succulent I have which is pretty easy to do with some of them. So I want to show you some of that process and show you kind of my method for doing some of this. So let's grab some of the plants I want to use and then get to the backyard in the full sun. That's the type of conditions we're going to be working with. So in the summer, in the spring, the back of my gator is full of plants, of soil, of all the things I need, fertilizers. So what I'm doing today is I want to grab these three burrows tail. These to me are just super fun. I love them. And they're one of the things that I think everyone loves because you want to have them in your house usually. So string of pearls, burrows tail, a lot of people try to keep these and they do well in the house depending on the conditions, but you know where they thrive? outside in the summer, in the sun, in the heat. So that's why I love using a lot of these succulents outside because I feel like they get their best life outside. So this is a little pot from last year I had on my back patio. You can see the agave kind of got a beating with, I don't know if that was probably, it could have been even from some weather. It could have just been from winter storage. So I really need to repot this anyway, but I have one of these string of bananas. That's just kind of the common name for it. It's a type of senecio, but I have then this one from last year that's potted up is doing so well. And this is a super easy one to take clippings of and put it in a container and it will grow. So what I'm gonna do before I head back to where I wanna start planting is I'm gonna take some clippings and I am just pulling off. See how you can see what I'm doing? I'm just pulling off strings of it. And it doesn't look like anything much now, but we're gonna pull these off and then we're gonna take them back with us. And this is what we're gonna plant as part of the container, which sounds kind of hilarious and kind of stupid, but this is a great way. And I do this with, see that nice strand I got? Just clip it at the end, super simple. Um, I do this with, you know, mother, like string of pearls. I'll do it, I was gonna say mother of pearl. I meant string of pearls. But you can do this with any of those and you just stick those clippings in the ground and before you know it, they root and they do beautifully. So I'm gonna grab those, the one plant I have, and then these three burrows tail and we're gonna head to the backyard. So we're having a pretty warm spring so far, which means everything was getting a head start and is a little bit further along than it usually would be. So I'm heading out to kind of my formal area of the backyard, and this is where I have some different focal points, and I put an urn in the middle of the yard. I have my basket, so if I'm going to plant in the middle of the yard, I'll sometimes just grab a basket, put the plants in it, and head out because it makes it easy. I don't like to always drive the gator, on all the grass because it compacts it. So I try to find ways to not do that. But we're out in the middle of the yard. So this is the full sun and you can see, if you look around, yeah, full brunt of the sun, lots of heat, lots of dry heat in the summer. So you have to pick things that can maybe stand up to that. And I don't have water systems, I don't have drip lines. So everything needs to be hand watered if it gets watered, which means I wanna try to mitigate as much of that as possible and have things be really drought tolerant. So that's why I'm picking these succulents for this area. So this is really the area and you can see I moved something that was here earlier. I decided I didn't want it there. So I put grass sod back in there that I dug up somewhere else. But this is, I got this urn this spring and I really like it. It's a heavy antique cast iron urn. And I put a large agave in it that has kind of a lot of structure to it. Kind of a lot of interest, which I just think it's really pretty. I got this from a friend, Laura gave it to me. Oof, it's probably been five years ago now and it just keeps getting bigger, but it's in really a focal point you can tell with sight lines where it has my fire pit area with my citrus and my fig trees. Beyond is the agave table. So I really like to have kind of a statement piece here. So it's full sun, it gets dry, it gets hot, and that's why I'm choosing a lot of these plants. So for things like this string of bananas that I picked, this you can easily, and all I'm gonna do is actually make a little hole in the dirt, which you can just see I'm just gonna do with a finger. It's kind of hard to see, but there's the hole. And then I'm just gonna take the end of it, stick it down in that hole, and then cover it up. That right there is going to root and it will actually start just proliferating and filling this whole container. 
So a lot of times when you do something bare root like this, meaning it has no roots, the most important thing is you don't wanna over water it. Because if you over water it, it has no roots to actually absorb that water and it will want to start rotting. So what I'm gonna make sure, since I'm planting all succulents in here anyway, and the agave is one that doesn't like a lot of water, this is a great time to do that because it won't actually need all that much water. So now I'm gonna put about three of these burrows tail in here and then I'm going to offset with those clippings and do three about areas of these clippings, plant in various areas. And then eventually these will all come out over the pot and look really fun. So when it comes to things like agave, I try to pick things that also don't need a lot of water, just like the agave, but and can kind of just do well on their own with neglect. To me, gardening is more fun if I'm not trying to run around trying to remember to water everything and figure everything out. And so all these things will do really well on neglect. So if we come in, you can see I've planted the three burrows tail, all those little areas, a string of bananas. One's kind of hiding under there. But eventually now, these are all gonna really start growing and coming out over the edges. Now, this container is just filled with the all-purpose organic potting soil, the espoma that I always use, and some plant tone. Again, agave, these succulents, it's not that they're heavy feeders. They do just like, though, a little bit of added, you know, nutrients. And so that's what I'm giving them since they're in a the container. So I'm gonna water it well now just to water everything in, then let it dry out really well in between waterings. And that's why, honestly, I love using these here. So this will eventually be full and I will show you more of it. So my vegetable garden is just beyond here. So it's always kind of something fun to see from the distance. And it's in an area with kind of a lot of formality. All of the allium, the spring blooming allium are now starting to bloom, which is, it's just fun. I mean, look at those beautiful globe flowers. The pollinators love them. There's a bee right there right now. Do you see the bee? Look at that. That's what, what makes you happier as a gardener than seeing nature actually loving what you're doing. That's the whole point. <sighs> it's a good time. Come on, Kev. So behind me, you see a small planter. This is a, it's kind of an antique concrete faux bois piece I found a few years ago and put it on a stand. And it's next to an area, like my garden shed, that actually is really shaded. And I don't usually have a lot of shade. So what I plant in there is always kind of more of an experiment. And for me, a way to play with shade, which I don't do all the time. And I'm picking some different things in this one because why stay with the mundane? I save a lot of plants. And so I like to use as many as I can as the main plant in a container. So I'm gonna use a Sansevieria in this one, which is mother-in-law's tongue, but it's a unique one. And you'll see why, <laughs> you'll see why I like it. Cause it kind of goes along in that same vein as agave and things. Isn't it funny how I feel like as people, we gravitate towards things for some reason, no explanation. It's just what we love. That's the point. So down here, you see a lot of my aloe and agave pups that have been growing. And these I put out on a table in full sun here soon. But what I'm going to grab back here is this Sansevieria. It's a really unique one. I think it's just super gorgeous. And what I love about it is it has that kind of that structure to it that, you know, it almost looks like an agave, but it's not. And it does, it could do actually well if I tempered it into full sun, but I'm going to keep it here in this mostly shaded area. You can see I have a climbing hydrangea behind it. And then I'm gonna offset it with, of course, some annuals just to give it a little bit. You know, I think of annuals as the jewelry. They set off whatever you're putting as the main attraction in a container. So you want things that kind of go with the surrounding area, but then also do really well with what you're picking. So I'm going to first plant this up and then I have already the plant tone that I use in with my soil and the all-purpose pine soil. So I'm gonna pop this out of the pot and you could see I could actually already break off two separate plants if I want to, but I'm gonna keep it together as one here over the summer. And then we'll see how it looks. So, so far in here, what I have planted is the Sansevieria and some filler. And so you can see here, the Sansevieria is so fun to use. And it has a lot of structure to it, a lot of interest. What's fun about it is it has elements of what a spike would when we plant spikes as annuals outside, but it's something unique. And so that's what's fun about using house plants. Maybe they've been in your house all winter or for years, and you can maybe think of them in a different way as the centerpiece of a flower container outside. It's just a new way to use something and it gives it new life. Honestly, this thing will probably grow tremendously here over the summer in the heat outside and the humidity that we're gonna have here. And so I think it will really do well. And then this fall, I'll dig it up and put it in a container and we'll take it back in. And that's kind of the fun part. So, so far I just have one annual planted in here, three of them, but one type. And it's a darker purple leafed, it's purple lady. And that's what I like about it. It's just a simple, 
filler plant. And it's a really pretty one because it will really kind of fall over the sides and get much more voluminous and kind of come down and drape down in front of this faux ball planter. But I want to offset it with something that's more striking and will really offset the texture, which for me, I guys, you know, I love the silvery foliage. It's something I always go for. This is a, it's a variety of Artemisia, but it's just a annual Artemisia. So it's the, it's the silver bullet. I don't know if you've ever used it. It's one of my favorites just because it's really simple. So if you happen to like silvery foliage, this is a great one because it isn't about the bloom. It's about the foliage, which if you follow a lot of my plantings, you know, I'm all about the foliage and the texture. So that silver bullet Artemisia is just going to be gorgeous in here. So I'm going to pot two of those up here in front. So they really strike down over the sides, but look how they play with the purple and how well they're going to look beside each other. It's all planted up. I just need to water it now. But can't you instantly tell how at first it seemed like these were too dark, but then when you put something really bright with it, I just like the silver bullet. It just really sets it off. And it really brings out the variegation of the Sansevieria too, which is what I think is super fun. So now I just need to water it. We're going to pack up as in Kip and I are going to pack up and we're going to get going over to mom's. You ready, buddy? Okay, I came over to mom's, Kip and I both came. Um, what you'll see here behind me are three repeating beds that go down to kind of a stone wall. It's a low wall and on the other side of it is a big perennial bed that I put in a few years ago. And in these three urns, they're cast iron, antique urns, you may recognize them because it's what I put uh, Christmas trees in at my house and I actually put one in at mom's house in one of these urns too. But then they come outside and have a full life in the sun all summer long. So what I'm doing here is going to be planting up the agave. So all these agave actually are pups off the large agave I have underneath my kitchen window. It's a massive agave and it puts off so many pups and I've grown a lot of them into larger ones. And so that's what I'm putting in each of these. So they're also ones that I keep year to year, take out of the container, put in a plastic container over the winter, put them in storage. They can actually, agave can take pretty cool temps. So they're usually around 40 degrees over the winter with minimal light. So it doesn't take much care and I water them maybe once or twice if during the winter once they're larger like this. So I'm going to plant them up and I'll show you kind of how I've gotten it ready and what the plants are going to be. So you already know my love for all purpose organic potting soil and that's what I've started by putting each one. Now like I said two of them I take in over the winter and I use as Christmas decor so they get emptied completely. Even this one that I don't use I empty it and put new soil in only because it's such a small amount of soil in there that I think it's really best to be able to give it some fresh soil. I just think it's better for the plant somewhat. So now what I'm going to be doing is actually planting up the container. So I have the potting soil in there. What I also have been doing is putting plant tone in all my containers. What's nice about it is it has the biotone in it, which you see me use in new perennials and shrubs I plant and trees, which is really a root stimulator kind of just helps them start off and get a good hold in the beginning, but then it also has just some great nutrients in it. So it's just a good organic way to feed things without being too strong. So I'm going to sprinkle this in each container. And honestly, this is how simple it is. But what I love is see how you can see down and you just get this repeating. There's something about to me when you have a large area like I do. So this is obviously a big East lawn. And I put in some large celebration maples here recently that will eventually be almost an alley of sorts. But this repeating nature really draws your eye down to those two columns. So what I'm going to do now is plant the agave. So we have three of them that are somewhat the same size. Now this one you can see, and I've shown this before, sometimes after a year and then a, and then a whole winter in storage, it gets kind of yucky on some of the bottom leaves. So I'll cut some of these off kind of all around and then I will plant this up and what I'm going to do is put two of these wonderful silver strands in it. I just think these are so pretty and they're going to play really well with the silver mist Pellier Kristen that I'm going to plant in it too. These do really well in full sun. They get really large and drape over the edges kind of like these but they have different textures you can see but the same color palette. So to me they're really striking as you look down and see the repeating nature of them with the large agave in them too. So I'm going to get started, plant these up, use protection when working with agave because they do have pointers. 
So if you're not used to them, make sure you know and have gloves or long sleeves if you need to too, depending on the size. Okay, so in no time, look at that. All three are planted. So you can see what I mean. There's like a striking, I know, there's something striking going down, which detracts from the winter burned arborvitae. Yes, they most likely are dead, but I'm gonna still hold out a little bit of hope and see if any green comes on them. You know, some of them are like six years old. Anyway, don't look at those. What you should be noticing is, see, I, I just love it. So what I do wanna show you is, I did trim off on some of them. Some of these big ones that just looked bad at the bottom. See how kind of gnarled that is? It's great for the plant because it keeps opening up from the center. And then all these little things were on one of the big ones and these are all pups. So all of these, even though they don't look like they have a lot of root on them, I could put these in ground just like this and they'll grow into a large agave. That's what's amazing about this. So if we go over, this one is a lot more upright and tight. It's gonna open up. So what agave do, see the center here? On this center piece, they just keep opening and then in the sunlight and as it wants to settle in, this will really open up and all of this will fill in. So when you cut some from the bottom, it gives you more room to do those also, put some filler in. But you can see as the ones going down here a little further. Yeah, see how good they look? These are big square beds that I just edged here recently again. So they have summer blooming allium, so they have millennium in front, summer beauty in the back or it might be pink planet in the back, and then some green velvet boxwood just to give them some structure. But look how simple and beautiful it is. I love the simplicity of agave, but it also just catches your eye. So it's one of those things, you have to do what works for you. But now what we're gonna do is, yeah, down there on top of those columns, I have a couple urns, so we're gonna quick pot those up too. Okay, I'm down here. At the end of that yard, I drove down, and these two columns are architectural salvage pieces that are the entrance down into the orchard I put in a few years ago. So all these trees out here are getting established and really getting their shape. I like to do the open base method on all those. And then there's a hedge of Green Mountain Boxwood here on either side of this column. But up on the columns, because when there's a, when there's a spot to make a statement, I like to do it. So I like to plant the two antique urns I have up there. So these are called open daisy urns. That's the pattern that's on them. And I thought we better quick pot them up because why not? So you can see the urn is sitting up on top of this column. I took the top off of this one. That's the one we're gonna plant right now. And it's called open daisy because it's shallow, but then it opens up and has what almost look like petals of a daisy. So yes, they're antique. I like the kind of raw, rusty, paint but chippy look on them. I just think it makes it look like they've been maybe in this yard for, you know, over a hundred years, which to me is really fun. So what I'm first gonna do is fill this with the all-purpose potting soil. Same thing I use, again, agave, yes, they want well-draining soil, but if it's a good organic potting mix, it's gonna be a well-draining soil. So what's great about these, they're up high, so what do I do? I don't water them a lot. So I put the soil in here, and these ones I do not put annuals in because I don't wanna to have to get up and water them. The annuals obviously would need more water than the agave. So I will put the plant tone in again, just because I think it's just great to add something. You know, these are shallow pots, so they don't have a lot going on in them. So I think it's good just to add a little bit of more, you know, nutrients if I can. So I'm gonna pop these out of their containers, which you can see these are gorgeous agave. I've had these quite a few years and every year just go in and out and they look great up there with minimal care, minimal water. So I'm gonna plant them up. We'll see how they look. When it comes to these that I put in and out of containers, don't feel bad root pruning them. If the roots get really long and feel like you can't fit them in the container well, that's a good way to control their size. So I pruned them slightly so I can fit this in here better. And you can see then, it really doesn't even need annuals around it, especially once it will be up on the column itself it really only needs itself. And then I don't have to worry about watering it. So root pruning is gonna be your friend here. And now I'll just put some soil around it to really make sure it's in place and has what it needs. And we'll be good to go. So I just set them up there and watered them somewhat. And you can see, this is why I don't like to put annuals in them because watering, especially for mom, I don't wanna have her have to water way up high like this. 
isn't fun and annuals would need a lot more water. So these, honestly, I let the rain water them and then when we get dry in the summer, maybe water them every other week if they really don't need a lot of water. So that's why it's great to put them up high like this because it really just, it's something structural that you can see but you don't have to care for a lot. And that's really what the whole point to me of gardening is when I can have a lot of look for <laughs> little work. So you can see now if you go through this space, you come down into the orchard. It's just kind of a fun space. I have a little sundial there, a big cast iron column that I just think it looks architectural. So I had it installed. So it just stands upright. It's like 12 foot tall, maybe. But then this bed is really starting to take off. So we have lots of peonies in here, lots of allium, all these things. And so now they'll be set off, as you can see, with these columns and then all these planters. So it was really fun. This is the discard. So these are the pieces I cut off of those. And you can see they also had a couple pups, which are in this one. So I can pop these up if I want. This is why I have too many plants, because I save all this. But the rest of it will either go into compost, keep it away from things because it is still sharp and has those edges. So you don't want anything to get close to it. That's also what's nice about putting agave up high is if they are sharp ones, you don't have to worry about people brushing against them or anything. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed planting the agave and some other things for the summer because you know what? This heat wave we're having right now, if it's any inclination, this is why I love to plant agave because they need little care and they need little work for me later on when it starts getting even hotter, which it's hot already. But what I just realized was I have my earphones in. This was the music I was listening to before I was filming. The mic is for the current filming. Why I kept these on, I don't know, but that's the real me. You get the nitty gritty garden Caleb when I'm outside filming like this. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're inspired. Hope you're excited maybe to plant something. As always, share these videos around because that helps me immensely, but it helps everyone else see gardening is fun and doable and maybe enjoyable. So check my website, wiseguy.com for tips, for tricks, for recipes, because after a hot day, you want something good to eat. So until next time, do something in the garden share something happy, plant something that gives you maybe a little bit of excitement and joy, and you'll be in a good place.